Hey there! In this video, we are going to be looking at calculating the magnitude of a vector. Now to find out how to do that, stay tuned. Welcome to Rise Up Namobia. My name is Matt Yanata aka the resistor of bad and the lover of good. Hashtag dark and lovely underscore. Walk by faith and not by sight. So, say for example you have a certain vector, right? So, AB. Now, if you are asked to calculate the magnitude, how would you do that? Now, first of all, before we calculate the magnitude, let me show you how to denote or how to write a magnitude. We denote the magnitude by putting it in between two vertical lines. Okay? Because when you look at this AB with an arrow on top, this indicates that it's a vector. But, now notice that here we have that AB with the arrow on top, but it's put in between two vertical lines, which indicate that this is a magnitude. Okay? Now how do we calculate this vector's magnitude? Now your teacher or your book has probably told you that we use this formula, which is the square root of x squared plus y squared, which means you look at your vector and then you plug in whatever figure is representing the x and the y, which in this case is the 4 and the 3. So you, you square the 4, which will give you 16, and then you square the 3, which will give you 9 formula. So what is 16 plus 9? That will give you 25. So if you find the square root of 25, that will be 5, and that's your final answer. Now, have you ever wondered where did they find this um, equation, or how did they come about with this equation? Now, if you are like me, and always want to know where they came up and how they came up with the equation. Stay tuned. Before I explain to you how we got that formula, I want you to notice that this vector is the same vector from the previous slide, and this is its magnitude using the same formula. Now before I explain, I want you to pause the video and draw this vector representation on the squared paper. Okay, so pause the video now. Okay, now to draw this vector on the squared paper, we need to choose a starting point, which can be anywhere. So let's start here. So now we are on the x-axis. What number are we given for the x-axis? Is it a positive or a negative number? It's a positive 4, meaning from the point of origin, we are going to move to the right-hand side. So let's move. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we move 4 lines to the right. Why? Because it's a positive 4. And then we go on the y-axis. So we check, what are we given for the y-axis? Are we given a positive or a negative? We are given a positive 3. So meaning we are going to be moving up on the y-axis. So let's go where we stopped, which was here. And then we move three lines going up. One, two, three. So we go back where we started. We draw our line and then the direction. Then we label our vector. Now I need you to know that a vector is like um, in physics when you are taught that a vector is what? It's a physical quantity that has both magnitude and direction. Hmm? Or that has both size and direction. Magnitude is just another word for size. So, basically when you're asked to look for the magnitude, you are looking for the size of this line. Okay? So, if you know you are looking for the size of this line, I want you to notice that here, this is actually a right angle. Or a triangle with a what? With a 90 degree. Now, if this is a triangle with a 90 degree and you know you, on the x-axis you moved how many lines? Four lines. And then on the y-axis you moved three lines basically here remember from trigonometry which was the first video of trigonometry we spoke about something called the what the pythagoras theorem so basically the pythagoras theorem is how they came to that equation that we use to find the magnitude of vectors okay so now that we know how to find the magnitude and we know what the magnitude is I want us to look at this question. Suppose that vector A is equal to this and then vector B is equal to this. So number one, 
if a is equal to b, what are the values of x and y? Okay, so first you want to check at vector a. And then you check whatever is on top. And then you write that down. And then you write it is equal to whatever is on top in vector b. Okay, so we have 2x plus y from vector a is equal to 9 from vector b. And that becomes our first equation. Okay? And then you go to whatever is at the bottom in vector a, which is the x. And you write it is equal to whatever is at the bottom in vector b, which is the y plus 3. And that becomes our second equation. From here, you solve this by substitution. Okay? Now, if you don't know how to solve by substitution, I'll be putting a link down below in the description, which will be the second link. Because the first link, I'll put the Pythagoras theorem, just in case that you didn't watch the, that video. And the second link, I'll put the substitution one on how to solve such equations by substitution. Okay? So let's begin solving this. If you have two equations like this with two unknown variables, which is x and y, you want to check in the second equation, we already told that x is equal to y plus 3. So we can take that y plus 3 and plug it into the first equation wherever we see x. So is, where do we see x in the first equation? We see it here. Meaning, we plug in our y plus 3 there where there is an x. Now when you plug it in, Make sure you put it into brackets. Okay? So this was 2x plus y equals to 9. But now we plugged y plus 3 in the place of x. So it's 2, open bracket, y plus 3, close bracket. Okay? So what do we do from here? We get rid of the brackets by multiplying it out. So what is 2 multiplied by y? That will give us 2y. And then 2 multiplied by 3 would give us 6 and then plus y equals to 9. Now notice that we have two y and a y here that are like terms. So what do we do? We check what sign is in front of this y. It's a plus sign. So you plus, what is 2y plus 1y? It will be 3y plus 6. So this plus 6 just comes down the same way it is. And then 2y plus y is equal to 3y. Okay? Now, from here, it's a simple linear equation, which you can just solve. So you can solve by taking this 6 to the other side, whereby it becomes negative 6. Or, if you know that this is a positive 6, you can simply cancel by subtracting 6 on both sides, which will cancel on the left-hand side, and then you will be left with 3y on the left, and then 9 minus 6 will give us a 3. Okay? Now, knowing that we want the value for y, 3y is the same as saying 3 multiplied by y. To cancel multiplication, we divide by 3. So 3 divided by 3 will cancel out and we are left with y is equal to 3 divided by 3. So this 3 divided by 3, that will be 1. So y is equal to 1. Okay? Now you use that 1 and then you substitute it. You can use any of the equations, whether it's equation 1 or equation 2. So for this one, let's use equation 2. So wherever you see a y, you plug in 1 in the equation 2. Okay? So this is equation 2. So where do we see a y? The y is right here. So we plug in 1. So we have 1, x is equal to 1 plus 3, which will give us 4. And that's your final answer. So have you satisfied the question? It's asking for what are the values of x and y. So yes, you have satisfied the question because the values for x and y is 4 and 1. Okay? So, how are you finding this video? Is it helpful so far? If yes, please do support the channel by giving us a huge thumbs up and subscribing. Okay? Now, how about if you are given a question that says, given that the vector n is equal to this, 
and uh, the vector O is equal to this. Where x is positive, find the value of x such that two vertical lines and in between them n equals to another two vertical lines and in between them O. What does this mean? Now, the first thing I want you to notice is that the fact that the n and the O, which is equal, is in two vertical lines. This means they are no more talking about uh, the vectors being equal, but they are talking about the magnitudes of the vectors being equal. Okay? So, unlike on the previous slide where we spoke about the vector A and B being equal, where we took whatever was on top and we made it equation 1 and then whatever was at the bottom we made it equation 2 this time around instead of just having n equals to o hmm, we have the magnitude of n is equals to the magnitude of o so this means for you to solve for this you are not going to take whatever is on top and make it equation 1 and whatever is at the bottom and make it equation 2 you will have to find the magnitude of n and then the magnitude of o Okay, so you can do that by using the on both sides because you'll be looking for the magnitudes separately because n is on the left hand side and then o is on the right hand side. So let's do just that. So we plug in the x and the y values for the vector n and then the same for the vector o and then we work out knowing that 6 squared is equals to 36 plus 8 squared which is 64 is equal to x squared will be x squared and then 0 squared will be the same as 0 so we, it's fine we don't write it down now from here a lot of people will work it out until they get the answer but I like removing the square root okay so how can I remove the square root because it's a square root I can remove the square root on both sides by squaring both sides. Okay? So if you square both sides, that will remove the square root. And on the right hand side, you will be left with x squared. And you will be left with 36 plus 64. Okay? Now what is 36 plus 64? That will give us 100. And then on the, left, on the right, you still have x squared. Now, the initial question asked for you to find the value of x. Hmm? So, here we have x squared is equal to 100. Now, for us to get the x alone, we reintroduce the square root on both sides. So, on the right hand side, it will cancel out the square, which will lead to x. And then on the left hand side, what is the square root of 100? It's 10. And that's your final answer. Okay? Because it says where x is positive, we leave this x as 10, positive 10, okay? So again, if you found this video helpful, do give us a like, subscribe to our channel, turn on that notification button to be the first to see the next upload, share with friends, family, and classmates, and remember, together, we rise to higher heights, apart, we all stay behind. Cheers.